I know y'all have been wanting another video for quite a long time, right? Well, I've got one for you. It's another uh, bathroom video. I don't have proper studio to set my videos up with. Regardless, here is the message at hand. I'm going to be telling you about my new series called The Church of Weed. Consider it a spin-off series of what I originally was doing, Dex File Experiments. And you're still going to have that Dex Files finale at some point. I don't know exactly when, but it is going to be including all of the combinations that I've listed. Spare for Benzodrex. Benzodrex will be taken out of the picture. Everything else is tried, true, and tested. What I will be talking about in this video in particular is how it is that it seems to be naturally by design that cannabis reverses one's tolerance to DXM in the best possible way. Is it that way by design? I don't know. They say nature has an intention, but a lot of naturally, uh, sorry, naturally occurring things can fuck you up in the worst possible way. That goes without saying. However, I will be telling you why it is that the CYP2D6 enzyme in particular seems to have a very big impact on how psychoactive THC can be. It has a lot to do with endocannabinoids being made active, like anandamide, for example. The only known naturally occurring endocannabinoid uptake inhibitor that would be considered potent that anyone knows of at this point is guanosine. In other words, guanosine which you will find within black peppercorns. You can swallow the black peppercorns. You don't have to chew them up in order to get whatever it is that the plant has to offer. Regardless, um, in regards to why it seems to be the best possible way of reversing your tolerance to DXM, cannabis specifically, seems to be from not only the THC itself, which inhibits that CYP2D6 enzyme, but all of the cannabinoids in general that contribute a lot to the psychoactivity of cannabis. You have to have those terpenes in the mix. And without that, you just don't have the same psychoactive effects. That's why the Delta 8 THC concentrate that they are selling to people, and it's perfectly legal for you to have in your possession, of course, is not as effective as the naturally occurring cannabis, because without those terpenes in the mix, you don't have the endocannabinoids as active. Specifically, what I would be referring to is anandamide and 2-arachidonoglycerol. Anandamide seems to be a go-to substrate for CYP2 metabolism experiments. And that plays a significant role in how black peppercorns are able to increase the absorption of anandamide when taken consistently over a period of time. That's all I have for this particular episode. This is the first episode of my new series that I'm coming out with that I will be calling The Church of Weed, where you will be seeing how it is that cannabis seems to be by design, specifically THC, seems to be by design the drug that is naturally occurring that we were all meant 
to take. If there was ever a drug that we were meant to take, it seems to be that particular drug, THC. It goes together with our immune system in a way in which our body regulates itself in the best possible way. Is it by design? What say you? I wouldn't say that is the case since there are cases where people are allergic to THC, where they get endocannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. In other words, they projectile vomit. However, I've found something that can counteract that. Ginger root seems to. If all of my research adds up the best possible way that it can, and that's all that I'm going to be disclosing with you for this particular episode. Stay tuned.